Good morning. My name is Laura Gonzalez, and I'll be discussing today three articles from Al Jazeera's news. From my first article read, Trump calls FBI search on Mar a Lago a travesty of justice. Former President Trump filed a lawsuit on Monday asking a federal judge to appoint a special master to review documents seized from Mar a Lago. The government recovered around 300 documents with classified markings from the raids, and so Trump addressed supporters at his campaign this Saturday in Pennsylvania, saying that the raid was an egregious abuse of the law. The Department of Justice has said in court filings that highly classified government documents were discovered in Trump's personal office during this raid. Among these papers, 18 documents were labeled top secret, 53 labeled secret, and 31 marked as confidentials. Agents found dozens of empty folders labeled classified, raising the speculation that sensitive documents might have been lost, destroyed, or moved. Trump also got back at his successor, Joe Biden, who during a speech last week described Trump and his MAGA, Make America Great Again, supporters as extremists who threaten the very foundations of our republic. Trump slammed Biden's address as the most vicious, hateful, and divisive speech ever delivered by an American president. He also mentions, we are the ones trying to save our democracy, very simple. The danger to the democracy comes from the radical left, not from the right, he said. He calls Joe Biden an enemy of the state in his first public appearance after the search of classified documents. Al Jazeera's Mike Hanna thinks that many Republicans were concerned that his participation in this campaign could hurt the party's chances in November elections. Now the Democrats are framing the midterm elections as a form of referendum on Donald Trump, particularly on his criminal behaviors. This could provide reinforcements to the Democrats and a major threat to the Republican Party come November. From the second article, and one of the most heartbreaking news I've heard during this year is the U.S. students in Uvalde, Texas, back at school amid grief and fear. One of the most heartbreaking news for the citizens of the United States was the massacre of Texas during this year. This is going to be about my second article. The U.S. students in Uvalde, Texas, back at school amid grief and fear. Three months after a gunman killed 19 children and two teachers in the fourth grade classroom, the students in Uvalde, Texas, are returning to Robb Elementary School. Students began arriving at Uvalde Elementary before dawn on Tuesday, walking through an eight-foot metal fencing surrounding the campus, passing the state trooper standing outside the entrance on every corner and outside the school. There were colorful flags inside the hallways and teachers wearing turquoise shirts that read Together we rise and together we are better on the back. Rob Elementary School did not reopen. And although school started weeks ago in many parts of Texas, officials pushed back the first day of school in Uvalde after a long summer of devastation, fear, anger and revelations of widespread failures by law enforcement since they allowed an 18-year-old armed with an AR-15 style rifle to fire inside the classrooms for more than 70 minutes. I chose this article because this is a problem that has been happening during years and it still happens and it hurts people and it damages kids and we need to address this as a nation. We also see in this article a story from the perspective of an afraid mother, Ashley Morales. Her son, Jeremia, is back at school. She has to put him back at school since there is no more options for her. She's a working single mother, and there is no more options for her. She will drop Jeremia outside Uvalde Elementary School on his first day of class, since parents are not really allowed inside. She mentions how she is nervous and scared. Last year, her son was a third grader, and he lost three friends during the May 24 incident. She felt a rush of anxiety walking down the school hall in a meeting the teacher night. The only thing she could think about is that school was going to start again. Even though the pushing back of the first day of school, Uvalde Elementary officials said 
Several enhanced security measures remain incomplete, including installing additional cameras and new locks. The Texas Department of Public Safety has committed to put three dozen state troopers on Uvalde campuses. But this is no comfort to some families since the day of the massacre, more than 90 state troopers were on the scene during the attack. One of the solutions for this situation for some families were signing off for virtual school. Other families pulled out their kids of the district and enrolled them in private schools. Colorful murals for each of the 21 victims were painted around the town and people from Texas were encouraged to wear maroon and white in the campaign to support the Uvalde community, as well as schools across the state showing support. And last but not least, the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety called the response an abject failure. Last month, the Uvalde School Board fired the chief, Pete Arreondo, who failed to take control of the scene and wasted time by looking for a key for a classroom door that was likely unlocked. The third article talks about heat wave pushes California's energy grid to its limits. California is facing now the possibility of blackouts as a brutal heat wave pushes demand on the western U.S. state's energy grid beyond previous records, prompting authorities to urge residents to limit their electricity usage. State energy officials said that on Tuesday afternoon it could top 51,000 megawatts, the highest demand the state has ever seen. Elliot Mainster says that it has entered the most intense phase of this heat wave and warned residents that blackouts, rolling, rotating outage are a possibility. It is absolutely essential that people and business conserve power. The heat wave has unleashed extreme heat across the Pacific Coast states and challenges people to an extreme weather, worsened by the climate crisis and the struggle to adapt. California energy grids run a combination of solar power and natural gas during the day, but solar power begins to fall during the afternoon into the evening. And aging natural gas plants that the state relies on for backup becomes less reliable and the National Weather Service predicts heights between 100 Fahrenheit to 115 Fahrenheit across inland California and 80 Fahrenheit to 99 Fahrenheit towards the coast. As the governor's office says, they have proclaimed a state of emergency to increase energy production and reduce demand. We must end dependence on fossil fuels that destroy the climate and make extreme heat more common. These high temperatures have also heightened the risk of wildfires and enhanced the possibility of lightning strikes. Four deaths were reported as some 4,400 firefighters battered 14 large fires around the state, with 45 new blazes breaking out on Sunday alone. Scientists say that the climate change has made the West warmer and drier in the last 30 years and will continue to make extreme weather and wildfires more common and destructive.